Hi guys, it's Tracy. And Glenn. And we are at the Tampa Aquarium in Florida. So this is a half million gallon, 22 feet deep saltwater tank, and we're going to walk you through some of the sea life that they showed us on our trip. We came in through the cave, cage, <laughs> uh, because we didn't want to accidentally jump in on top of any of these uh, fish swimming around. So for the safety of the animals, um, they let us in through that cage there at the top. So here I make sure my guide's recording because this is the first thing I really came across. This is this really large ray. It's a southern stingray. And um, they had, what, five of them in this cage? Uh, I thought it was closer to three. Three to five. They had two barracudas, though, and these were huge. These were four to five feet long each. They got really, really close to us and didn't care if we were there or not. And I was absolutely loving this whole trip. This was so cool. We are on full display for all of the tourists coming in through the um, through the aquarium. Um, the tank is 22 feet deep. You can see Glenn's a little bit lower than where a guest would stand. Uh, it was neat to kind of feed the little fishes. They're looking for any little small bits of food that they may have missed before. So that's why I'm kind of fluffing up the bottom of their of that gravel stuff. They're just looking for food. Okay, so um, next you'll kind of notice uh, underneath that ray there, there's actually a sea turtle. Um, and sea turtles, unlike the rays, um, don't have gills. They are air breathers, and so the turtle actually has to come up to the surface to get air, um, but it can hold its breath for quite a while, and so it likes to come down and pretty much go to sleep at the bottom um, until it needs air. You may have seen me right behind it just to give a size perspective of how large this turtle is. Um, our guides told us before we got in the water, this turtle had actually been injured, and so it could never be released back out into the wild. You might look carefully on its shell to see if you can see where there is a shark bite. I think it's over on the other side, though. I felt very small. So all the coral in this tank is fake. It's all artificial rock, and so they didn't have any problems with us touching. So it's a little hard to communicate underwater when you have one idea and you can't say the words because it just blah, 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 blah. So you have to create little signs. <laughs> so we thought we were pretty cute. <laughs> I thought she was just trying to make sure I was uh, breathing out, uh, which is required for scuba diving. Um, turns out she wanted to give me a kiss because we were having so much fun. It was cool. This is a moray eel, and our guide actually told us that they are naturally a brown fish, but because of their skin, the stuff growing on their skin, uh, it creates that lime green uh, color. Look how close I got to this, this thing. This thing is a beast. This is the size that I saw in my point of view. Now, our guides had told us that this eel was um, seven to 10 feet long or so. It looked a lot bigger to me. So when we got out of the tank, I had to explain to Tracy that no, no, it's a little hard to see here, but there's actually two eels. You'll see another face down in the bottom corner there. It's actually two eels that are overlapping a little bit. Tracy thought she had found a 20-foot eel, and really she found two 10-foot eels. I thought I found a sea monster. Come on. <laughs> Um, this, again, we were on display for the kids, and so you see the little boy out there. He's having a good day. The um, tourists are starting to show up and go through the aquarium. Our dive started before uh, general hours for opening, and so there's not a large crowd like there was later in the day. But we're starting to become relaxed in our in our fish tank here, and we're starting to... to um, to really have fun with it. Um, so here I was trying to say, wow, that thing is huge. And then I remembered, oh yeah, it probably thinks my fingers are food. So I'm gonna keep those close to me so I don't get bit by the barracuda. Um, so the glass here, by the way, you might even see is very, very thick. Um, the glass is probably, oh, what was it? Close, 12? close to a foot. Thick. 
So Tracy's worried about her fingers being food for the barracuda, <laughs> but she hasn't mentioned that there's actually uh, four sharks in this tank. They had one nurse shark who um, left us alone. They're mostly like nocturnal and sleep during the day, so they had nothing to do with us. But there's three of these... They're sand tiger sharks. Sand tiger sharks. And then another uh, moray eel, too. So they have five eels, four sharks, um, and I'm not even sure how many rays. I think we got up to a three. Yeah, well, we'd um, have to look. So there's nine and a half foot long is the biggest shark. And, you know, got to wave to the kid. Because <laughs> here we are. There's a green sea turtle. There's the moray eel, the, the stingrays, and the sharks, the sand tiger sharks above our heads. What an amazing experience. And look how that eel moves. It moves like a ribbon. Just so effortlessly. And so my guide has, has put me over in the corner, over by... Uh the wall with my back to a wall he says it's a really good vantage point they kind of explained that beforehand and so here in a second um, we're going to see kind of what i was seeing now that i've come up off the bottom a little bit um, it, the view kind of changes when you come up even just a few feet so a few feet higher there's the sharks and you can tell the moment <laughs> i see the shark coming right at me I hold my breath, I bring my hand into my body because I'm now scared that this nine foot shark just came within two feet of me. And uh, I can't believe it, I'm, <laughs> my heart's beating. And so um, the, the sea life continues to circle around. So the sharks actually um, sleep with half of their brain still active. I have to laugh at Glenn right here because there's so much going on. There's stingrays, eels, coral, and he completely missed a, a shark swimming right by yeah. his Have face. you ever been so overstimulated that you miss a nine-foot shark three feet away? Because that happened to me right there. But look at all the fish free to swim up to us at any moment in there. There's um, jacks, several kind species of jacks fish in there. Oh, so again, that communication under underwater. So Glenn was saying, did you see his face or is your mask okay? And he's trying to tell me about coming face to face with the shark before. I'm trying to sell her, no, I got nose to nose. Me and that shark were nose to nose. I was really <laughs> close and, and uh, was quite happy to try and explain that underwater without words. So we played charades. So again, there's these rays are swimming all around us. It's, it's, I really want to reach out and, and just pet them and touch them, but um, i got to remind myself that's not allowed. And if you think that these teeth coming at us are intimidating, you're absolutely right. What you can see is about 100 teeth uh, sticking out of the mouth. Now, if we could take an x-ray of it. Um, oh, well, how convenient. Here you can actually see that they are continually growing new teeth and always replacing them. Um, the way that your hair continues to grow, shark teeth continues to grow. I did not steal this one out of the display. I actually picked this one up right off the floor of the tank, fresh out of that mouth, you guys. It's a little frightening. <laughs> it was that close to us again and again and again. But like Glenn said, they're pretty much on sleep mode here. So sharks will rest half of their brain at a time, but because they're, they must take in air or water through their gills to breathe, they have to keep moving. And so they will rest half of their brain at a time and continue to swim while sleeping. Using the lateral lines uh, right along the, the, well, the sides of the shark, they can actually detect their surroundings, including other animals nearby. Um, you might notice when they come near us, we start to breathe a little bit slower. One, it's kind of scary, uh, but two, our guide said that the sharks actually don't like being tickled by all of the bubbles. So we did our best to control our breathing when you're staring into that jaw of teeth <laughs> we showed earlier. Um, but the sharks just kept going. They, they kind of hit autopilot mode and were doing their laps, and so we found ourselves a nice little cubby on the side wall here, and they just kept buzzing right over us, and we just uh, just kept getting closer and closer to the sharks. So here's about as close as they would get. <laughs> Notice Glenn is not breathing I'm right not now. <laughs> and so it came right up to us, and I take, yeah, I exhale, I breathe again, <laughs> and uh, we've got that one from another angle here. 
just to show you how close it really was. Right as soon as one's done, the next one's right there with mine. It's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. It's it's amazing. So here's that first one. Again, those teeth coming right at you. It, it's, it's hard to, to hold your ground. You really want to cower or, or, or swim off or yell, but you can't do any of that anymore. It's really tempting to reach out and touch them. Maybe I'm just that crazy. But um, shark skin actually is not smooth to touch. You can run your hand down one direction, but not the other. If you pet a shark, say, backwards, you're actually going to cut up your hand because the scales are quite sharp, um, going against the grain. So here you can see on the, the shark some of the scars it's had from uh, other run-ins with other other sharks or, or just running into the marine equipment or uh, environment just roughed up inside but um, generally they're very smooth if you put them in the front to back direction. I mean, you know, I don't know how much you're going to go petting sharks here, but, you know, and we, we don't want to forget, of course, there are a host of other characters here. We've got all kinds of jacks coming around. I forget all the different kinds of jacks she said. I know she said there was Colby Jack and Cheddar Jack, but I don't remember what they're actually called so we had a fantastic experience it's, it's just a small enough tank that you get to see everything they've got including the turtle that eventually came out you get dozens of fish you get sharks you get rays you get the barracudas we had a fantastic time um, our guides were awesome all of our the folks helping us out gave us an amazing experience you guys have to go check this place out this and the moat marine uh, laboratory and aquarium down there near Tampa as well. So I was especially jealous because I got out of the tank and then the, the turtle came out. I've always wanted to see a turtle. <laughs> Our very first dive, somebody else saw a turtle and I've been wanting to see one for years and years now and it's never happened. I've never seen one up and active and so Tracy got that experience here at the end. As she is exiting, I'm already up and out of the water. Yeah, Glenn's I'm feet right, is I'm are right in the background. It, but I'm not, I don't have my head underwater, so I, I didn't see what was happening. That was now, awesome. take a look at the shark or um, at the turtle shell. You might see again that shark damage. But anyway, go check them out. Sometimes we had an amazing time. I hope you.